Hello everyone, this is Jay Dobbins of the Marvel DC Multiverse, and we are live at Planet Comic Con 2022, and I have a special guest with me here today, he's a best well-known author, please uh, let everyone know who you are, where you from. Hey Marvel lovers, this is Terry Mark, I'm out of Northern Colorado, I'm author of the Vim Hood Chronicles. I've, I've uh, been working at this for several years, I have uh, the, the, the Kill the Night, and the Sun Goeth Down, and Moonlight Serenade. Kill the Night is Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison are being chased by a gunslinger vampire who thinks uh, it, it, their electricity is going to kill the night. And, uh, and the Sun Goeth Down is Teddy Roosevelt and Ernest Hemingway against Frankenstein. And Moonlight Serenade is uh, Anne Frank, Amelia Earhart, Paul Newman, and Glenn Miller against Nazis and werewolves. Look for it on Amazon. Terry Mark. Okay, well, you obviously answered some of the questions I was going to ask you. <laughs> so, what made you, what, I mean, what inspired you to write these books? I've, I've been, I'm a lover of been writing for, you know, since I was a kid. Since I was about 12 years old, written stories. Um, I really am obsessed with research, and I love steampunk. And so I was looking for a way, uh, you know, format, and I came up with Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison. Uh, and the vampire, and it sort of grew into a gunslinger and a vampire, and the story kind of fleshed itself out. And the more I built and researched, the more I realized I loved it. And I went on to research uh, Teddy Roosevelt and Ernest Hemingway in, in 19 in World War One, and all the things that come together, and Moonlight Serenade, and all the things that come together to make that make it work. So it's historically as accurate. Obviously, you, Amelia Earhart didn't survive, and Frank never really escaped the you know the attic but I have them do that and from the timeline from then forward how they meet and all work together actually that's that's extremely creative man I'm, I never would have thought of that and honestly I never I don't know anyone who would have thought of this or came up with this idea so the fact that somebody did that you know I mean it's very rare man thank you Oh no! Oh no! Problem, man. No problem. <laughs> so um, the uh, I'm here next to Marat Michaels. Oh, uh, Marat Michaels. The you know the author of the of the poo. Uh, don't step on the poo. Or whatever. And what a brilliant concept. Um, my next. Uh, I, my head is full of you know trying to figure out other ideas for you know parodies and things like that now. But I've got another also another. Uh, set of uh, books I'm going to be working on once this is complete. Um, with the, uh, did I give you a copy of the comic book? I think I did. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Actually, yes, you did give me a copy of that comic book. And what was it? Oh yes. Uh, it's called Front Range Tales. Right. And the strip uh, that I had did for it is called Earth Absent. And basically, what it the story is is that aliens visit Earth and instead of like attacking or doing anything what they do is what we what we do today to a, a, a tomato garden or anything make it impossible for the creatures to eat the plants mm -hmm. and so they have to retreat into inside, inside their the humans that can survive and retreat inside our colleges and the scientist is struggling to figure it out is injured and die uh, but he creates an Android before he dies in the in the form of his daughter mm -hmm. and when the AI that survives wakes him up in 900 years in the future. His mind has been put inside the, the body of his daughter. <laughs> ah. Actually, that makes sense. That's interesting, too, though. Very interesting. So, that's where the story will pick up. The, the Most of the writing will pick up. Then I have the whole world to write in. I mean, all of the arcologies and all the environments that might have survived all over the globe. Uh, and travel, and it's all going to be steampunk because there's no, there's no electrical power, there's no nothing. Everybody gets from point to point by airship, and can only grow their stuff with inside the arcologies because the environment is alien. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of listeners are definitely going to learn something today in this episode because this this this, uh, this author here. They've done a lot of research, knows the history, and then, you know, creates a story of his own. However, uh, also, you know, with uh, a little bit of, you know, you, you give it a happy ending, obviously. 
which is good. Yeah. But it's also accurate, you know, except for the werewolf part. But <laughs> of course, you know, you gotta make it, you gotta make it interesting. You know, not too werewolf. Ain't nothing wrong with adding a little supernatural. Right. Into it. Right. One yeah. of the cool parts uh, in the in Kill the Night, for instance, the first novel, mm -hmm. they're traveling from Chicago, the Chicago Exposition in 1894, to Colorado. They come through Kansas City. When they come through Kansas City, the opera that's playing, mm -hmm. the stage manager is Abraham Stoker. That's historically accurate. He was here. Bram Stoker was here in Kansas City as a stage manager at the opera five years before he ever wrote Dracula. So I uh, have him meet the vampire. So it's kind of like you know, hey, he got the idea because he met the vampire from Kill the Night. We work well together. You know, actually, we are two. If hey, if Hollywood knows about this or has heard about you, man, and your stories, I hope they make movies out of these. Because I can, because I can picture this. I can picture these as movies. I think so. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I, I would go with graphic novels, but first I'm probably going to work on getting them on Audible so that more people can enjoy them because definitely the crowd here uh, you know, likes the books. People walked away with almost all my, all my free pens and bookmarks to go to the website, but you know, people just don't seem to have a lot of time to read anymore. So it's got to go on Audible or get it up on the movie. The, the uh, that, uh, movie studio over in the corner, I've forgotten what their name is, but they, they did um, Jesse James and uh, yeah. Secret, uh, Secret Treasure and Shakespeare's Mummy. They took one of the. They took a copy of the book and said, "Wow, that's a really cool concept." Now, I don't know. You know, I don't have the money to fund that kind of thing at this point. But they would. It's definitely up somebody's alley. Well, I hope they do it, and I hope you guys check it out, man, for sure. You know, actually, you know, we all have learned something interesting today in this episode. So, and you know, this guy here, I'm, I'm very happy and very honored to even. To be able to interview him, you know. Thank you. So no problem. And thank you very much for your time. All right. You have a good evening, and come on out tomorrow. Uh, come stop by booth twenty twelve. All right. I'll try my best. Uh, actually, you know, as usual, I didn't make any promises, but however, I did promise you I was going to see you again today. Which <laughs> here we are. <laughs> All right, my friend. Thank you. You take care. Uh, no problem. Thank you. And uh, that, that concludes this interview. Feel free to visit us like us on Facebook. We're available on iTunes, Google Play Music App, Spotify, and of course YouTube.